here I am again guys hello guys uh, same problem now let's use a different approach this approach uh, just require you to be a little bit organized and have some uh, practice and some capacity for solving systems of equation which in general are not going to be more than three by three but if you have to do those by hand also you have to be savvy when you do those uh, those system of equations. So the first thing, uh, I call this the tabular automated approach, but it's still by hand. Don't, don't, don't get confused by the name. Same thing, you have the supports. Uh, you start by looking at all the views, uh, getting familiar with the problem that you have to solve, and uh, uh, trying to see if you find any zero force members, which, but this time you already should know how to identify them. Uh, you put a plane here, you realize that uh, the only one that it doesn't belong to the plane when you study at the joint C is CE, so CE is a zero force member. And once you see the structure like this, you have in the same plane, you have three members or three forces or two members of one force very set, two of them collinear and one is not, the one that is not is zero. So you know that that force is going to be zero also immediately. Now you build a geometry table. The geometry table is just every single one of the members, you're going to put them in order, in any order that you want to. doesn't have to follow a pre-established order. And it's going to look something like that. AB is the member AB, this member. So then I have, for example, AB, CD, BC, and AD. AB, CD, uh, BC the member that was here that is not but it doesn't matter is there and AD and so on and then you go with AE, AE, ED and EB and all of the members all of the members X X is gonna be just the projection in X of that member for example if you look at the member AB and this is the X axis here then the member AB goes 8 meters in the X direction and everything is going in the direction so y and z is zero and the length is also zero for that member if you look at the member cd is the same thing all of that goes in a in the x direction so a zero zero length eight now if you look at bc well bc i'm assuming like we didn't recognize that it was a zero force member so i'm gonna let it for the time being in that table so if you put it here then uh, that member is going completely in the z direction, which is this one, and the length is 4. So 0, 0, 4, length is 4. Member AD, same thing. Member AD, same thing. Now you go to BD, for example. BD, BD, BD is this one. BD. If you go in X, you, you find that from here to here, it's going to be 8. And from here to here, which is this other part, it's going to be 4. So it's going to be 8 in X and 4 in Z. 8 in X, 0 in Y, and 4 in Z. How do you calculate the length? It was impressive, but uh, in the structural analysis class, there was a bunch of students that they didn't know that if you have orthogonal axis, no matter if you have 2 or 3, when you want to calculate the resultant, it's just the square root of the summation of the squares of the components. So it's going to be 8 squared plus 0 squared plus 4 squared at the map, square root, and that's going to be 8.94. And you do the same thing for AE, for example. AE now goes from here to there. How much goes from here to there in the x direction? This much, 4. How much goes in the z direction? This much from here to here, right? AE in the Z direction, 2. Uh, how much goes in the vertical direction? A. Square root of 4 squared plus 8 squared plus 2 squared, 9.17. Now, if you notice, I don't care about if it's going in a positive or a negative direction. And this is the beauty of this, because you don't even have to think that much. You just create the geometry table. Now is when you start. I just eliminated these two because I said, you know, they are zero, so I'm going to take them out of the, the geometry table just because, but you can leave it there. You leave them there without any problem. Now I'm going to start for joints with a maximum of three unknowns, if possible. If it's not possible, you start with any joint that you want to. 
but you are going to end up with more equations and the difficulty is going to be just in solving those systems. So if, for example, I look at the joint E, I have three unknowns, which are these three. Now, one of the things that I do when I work 3D and I'm look using this method, I always put every single bar in tension. Always. When it's 2D, I think and I see and I understand and I try to minimize changing signs and I put tension or compression according to whatever it is. Even though in this case I can see the direction of them, I'm going to put all of them getting out of the joint, meaning in tension. What you do is this. If you're doing to the joint E, identify the in this table every single uh, bar that has the letter E on them and because those are the ones that you are interested in and now you start saying okay this member AE and you don't even have to look at that for now AE the projection in the X direction when you do summation of forces in X is going to be 4 divided by 917 4 divided by 917 AE and 4 divided by 917 PE and 4 divided by 917 DE now, plus 30. Why is this 30? Because you have a force at that joint in 30, in, in x direction, and the value is 30. Now, what do you do after that? What you do after that is this. Remember I told you, I assume, I'm assuming that all of them goes, okay, comes out of the joint? Now you start seeing, okay, AE is this, AE. AE if I and, and, and I don't care if it's called AE or EA forget about that go to the joint E put the force here in tension and you see that in the X direction that force is acting to the left and if the to the right is positive then to the left is going to be negative and that's why I put the negative here and same thing is going to be with ED ED is going to be negative but EV is going to the right so it's going to be positive and it's going to be negative and you have your first equation that simple. Now you do the same thing in, in the y direction. 8 divided by 9.17. In this particular case, all the bars are the same length, the same projections, the same everything, and that's why you have the same coefficients. Don't get used to that, but that happens fairly often, but don't get used to that. So now it's 8 divided by 9.17, 8 divided by 9.17 BE, 8 divided by 9.17 DE. Same thing. Y negative 60, because I'm looking at Y. And in the y direction, at that joint, I have a force of 60. So I have to include that force of 60 here in my calculations. Now, AE. I said the three bars are pointing down the, the three forces in tension. All of them are coming out. Meaning, if I'm looking at the y direction and all of them are pointing down, all of them are going to be negative. As simple as that. And now I study in the z directions. Z directions. 2 divided by this, 2, div 2 divided by this multiplied by AE, 2 divided by this multiplied by EBE, 2 divided by this multiplied by DE, which is that. And now in the z directions, this is the z directions. You can see that these two bars are coming to the front, and this other bar is coming to the back. So that means that AE and EB are going to be positive, and ED is going to be negative. Don't forget the force of 40 that you have over there because that force of 40 uh, is applied at the joint. So this is what I told you about the signs. Two of them are going to be positive, one is going to be negative. Once you have that, you solve. If you have any calculator that can solve 3 by 3, use it. Use it. Uh, you can eliminate the, the, the denominator, multiplying this by the denominator of all of them because it's the same, but those are, you know, uh, just method of solutions or you can also if you realize if you realize for example that this is positive AE and this is negative DE and this is negative DE and this is negative DE and the coefficients are the same I can maybe multiply the top one and uh, this one the top one by two and then these coefficients and these coefficients are going to be the same and I can work with equation one and equation three at the map this and this cancel out, this and this cancel out. This is going to be 80, 80 plus 30, 110, and this is going to be positive 4. So I'm going to have 4 plus 4, A divided, A, B, E divided by 9.17 plus 110 equals 0, and I can solve like this just for B, E immediately. 
Then I go and I plug it into one equation, plug it into the other one until you calculate the values. Once you calculate the values, remember, then you're gonna if you're gonna find one value, the first value that we calculated was BE, and you have to plug this value into the equation. Remember, you're gonna include the negative sign in the equation because this is just math from now on. What the negative sign here is telling us as engineer is that they are the bars are subject to compression. That's it. Now the next step, light, hello light, come on light, there you go, light. There's a timer here on the motion detector and apparently I'm too quiet, too stationary. Well, this is statics, right? Bad joke. Okay, now uh, we can move to a different joint. Let's say joint A. Why joint A? Well, in joint A I have three unknowns, A, Y, this one, and that one because you already calculated AE. What do you do? Look for anything that gets A's, A's, and A's. And these are the, the bars that I have to pay attention to. And you're gonna do the same thing. So measure of forces in X equals zero. Then it's gonna be A divided by eight, AB plus zero, zero, divided by four, AD plus four, divided by 9.17, AD and the joint A. That's it in the X direction. And of course, this AD is not shown here because it was zero. The only unknown left is AB because I already know AB. Remember to include the values of the signs AB. And then you can calculate the force AB from there. Uh, so, mention of forces in Z now. What is Z? Z is this direction here. What do we have in Z? Uh, this coordinate, which is, uh, well, the three of them, but this one doesn't go in Z, so it's gonna be zero also. So what do we have in, in the Z direction? In the Z direction I have two divided by 9.17, and four divided by four AD, with the corresponding signs. Uh, we already knew AE, it's just plug it into, into that equation, and this is the value that is plugged in here, and solve for AD. Uh, if I want to calculate AY, I can calculate AY from here. I can just say summation of forces in Y equals zero if I wanted to in, in, in this, if I wanted to. And then I can calculate AY here, which is going to be just A divided by 9.17 multiplied by AE with the corresponding sign. Now, if I move to the join D, join D, we already know this, we already know that. So that means that we have one, two, three unknowns in that joint. Same thing, now you look for anything that has D, 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 those three, and D. What do you do? Summation of forces in Z. If you do summation of forces in Z, uh, or X, or Y, depending where you're interested, but if you do it in Z, zero divided by H, four, uh, CD, four divided by four, AB. And, but remember, AB we already know is a 25, where is the 25 here? 12.5, uh, AB, 25 here. So four divided by four, uh, AD, AD, 12.5, not 25, 12.5, four divided by four, AD. And then four divided by 8.94, BD, which is my unknown, and DE I already know from here, two divided by 9.17, multiplied by 57.31, and I can solve for BD. And once you have that, you can do summation of forces in X, same procedure, calculate your unknowns. Now, if you wanna continue and calculate the rest of the reactions, if the question is the reactions, we might guess, continue and do it. But if you just have to calculate the bars, this method, I think, I think, for the majority of you guys, is gonna be more straightforward. It might be longer, I don't know, it depends on how much you practice and, and how do you approach the problem. I hope that you like this one. And remember, I posted the other one also. So I see you next time that I can post any other video. Keep watching.